conventional on-demand heaters rely on the convenience of fossil fuel energy concentrates. Only one temperature sensor is needed to activate the combustion process within a furnace. Solar heating systems are a bit more complicated. They rely on the intermittent nature of sunlight and two temperature sensors. The solar heat available for collection is the driving force behind the differential controller. Metering the actual collector and storage temperature can be interesting, but it's not an essential part of collecting solar heat. The main function of a differential controller involves the regulation of a circulator pump based on the temperature difference between the heat collection area and the heat storage area. Differential temperature is proportional to heat availability and it may be monitored with a single LED that glows in proportion to ah, it looks heat. like the temperature today is 52 degrees according, according to this stationary thermometer with the bimetallic strip. But suppose we want to measure temperature from a remote location. Uh, if we want to do this, we'll need some temperature probes. Let's take a look at a couple temperature probes. These are three common remote temperature probes. Uh, you have the thermocouple, the thermistor, and the calibrated temperature probe. The thermocouple generates a voltage in response to temperature. The thermistor changes resistance in response to temperature. And the calibrated probe puts out a voltage in proportion the thermocouple to is made up of dissimilar metals. And when you apply heat to the junction, it causes uh, electrons to flow in proportion to the temperature. So uh, all we have to do with this thermocouple is connect it directly to a DVM uh, to see the uh, amount of voltage or current that it's going to put out. The current is so incredibly we won't even be able to monitor that. But we can monitor temperature, uh, voltage, I'm sorry, the voltage output which uh, represents uh, temperature. Right now uh, we have it set at the millivolt reading and it's putting out, uh, according to this, it's uh, minus 0.1 millivolts. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the scale is so small. I'm going to add a little heat by putting my thumb on here. Let's see if we can raise the temperature a little. Okay, so now it's up to 0.1 millivolts. Not a heck of a lot of voltage uh, coming out of this uh, thermocouple. Uh, now, if I add heat from the soldering iron, you should be able to see the uh, the output voltage go up. Now we're already up to three volt, three millivolts, five, and so on, five, six millivolts, seven millivolts. As soon as I take the probe off, the output voltage start to drop pretty rapidly. Now. Uh, there is a relationship between the thermocouple voltage and the temperature uh, and you can, if you know what that relationship is, you can actually use the thermocouple to read temperature. But it's mostly used for very high temperature reading. Okay, now let's take a look at our thermistor. Now the thermistor is a little different. It doesn't generate a voltage. It just changes its resistance with temperature. So we'll set our DVM to the resistance range. Now this is a 10K, uh, a 10K NTC thermistor. So at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, it would measure 10K. Right now it's measuring 12.4 uh, degrees. Uh, the temperature in the room is, uh, I don't know, someplace around 65 degrees right now. So that's about right. Uh, if I add a little heat, we should be able to lower the resistance of the thermistor. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, you can see the resistance start to drop 11, 11.5, uh, 10, 10. So it's dropping quite rapidly. If I add a little more heat from a soldering iron, it should drop even more rapidly. All right, so you can see the resistance is already down to 7K, 6K, so on. Okay, we'll take a closer look at this a little later, but first I, I want to take a look at our calibrated temperature probe. Okay, 
we've connected our calibrated temperature probe to a power supply and then we've connected the probes. One probe goes to the ground and the other probe goes to the output of the calibrated probe. This is a this is made from an LM34 by the way. Anyway, the first thing we'll need to do is uh, set our DVM uh, to read voltage. Okay, so right now it's reading 0.65 volts. That represents a temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit. If we add a little heat to the probe, I'll put my little thumb on here, and we should be able to raise the temperature. Okay, it's up to 6.68 or so. It's up to 70 degrees right now. 71 degrees, 72, and so on. And add heat from our soldering iron. Should be able to raise the temperature a little more rapidly. Oh, it's up to 81, 90, 100, 102, and so on. As soon as I take the probe away, you see the temperature drop. Uh, it takes a little while to cool down. Okay, now it's down to 100 degrees, 99, 98, and so on. Okay, so this measures uh, temperature in direct pr proportion to the voltage output. And this is a nice little tool if we want to see the actual temperature. But uh, as far as uh, the differential controller goes, we don't actually have to know the temperature. All we have to do is sense a difference in temperature. Okay, we've connected our DVM probe uh, to the common junction. This is the common junction of the thermistors. So this should measure approximately half the supply voltage. Remember the supply voltage is 14.2. Now if both these uh, thermistors are the same temperature, that uh, voltage right now would be 7.1 volts, but it's not. It's a little bit higher. That means the uh, collector uh, probe is slightly higher than the, the uh, storage probe. If we add a little heat to the storage probe, uh, see, you can see that voltage start to go down. Now it's uh, 0.7 volts. Now if we add heat to the collector probe, we should be able to see that, that voltage go up. So let's add a little heat to the collector probe, and we can see the voltage start to rise at 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, and so on. So this is a, a good way of uh, sensing a differential temperature. Now, if we add a little heat from our, our probe to this, we see that voltage go up quite rapidly. So this means that there's, there's heat available for collection, basically. And that's basically what we want to know as far as uh, differential controllers are concerned. Now, it would be nice if we had some way of indicating uh, this voltage uh, so we could actually see the heat that's available. But to do this we're going to need a regulated power supply. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, we're using a regulated supply voltage, so the supply to our thermistors, the su supply voltage to our thermistors is 5 volts. And the common junction uh, when both uh, the thermistors are at the same temperature is half the supply voltage, which is 2.5 volts. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what we've done here is we set up a, an op amp to buffer uh, this voltage, uh, and then we're feeding this into a uh, LED through two diodes to further reduce the, the voltage, so that by the time the current uh, hits the, uh, the, the diode, uh, the diode is off right now because both probes are the same temperature. When we have heat available, uh, that means that the collector probe is going to be hotter than the storage probe and the voltage at the common junction will be higher and we're setting this up in such a way so that when the heat available, when there is heat available, this LED will glow and it's going to be an indication of heat. So anyway, I, that might sound a little confusing. 
Anyway, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to add heat. We we'll put this soldering iron here, and you should see that the voltage go up, and you should also see the LED start to glow. Can you see it glowing right now? That's an indication of heat. Where uh, there's a, approximately a 10 degree difference between the collector uh, between the collector temperature and the storage temperature right now. Let's uh, let's raise the temperature a little more and see if we see how that that works. Okay, can you see the LED glowing now? Okay. Now that's about a, a 20 degree differential. So the LED is just a, an indication of the amount of heat that's available.